Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome to today's video. So in this video, we are going to show you how you can add slicers okay, in your Power BI uh, dashboards. So slicers can be used to um, filter your data in uh, Power BI or your visuals. It is something that you may have already done in Excel. So how do you do something like that in uh, Power BI? So I already fast forwarded and I already have the charts or visuals I uh, in my report. So I've already connected my data or my files into my Power BI and created relationships. And this is actually quite important because you have to make sure that your data, your files are connected in the relationship view, especially if you're using more than one file. But of course, if you only have one file in your Power BI, then this thing simply uh, um, is not required because you only have one file, so there's nothing to connect. So it's important to have this. If you are not aware of how to do this, you can visit uh, the description and I will put the link in the comment or in the description about how I made this uh, data model. So I already have my charts as well, which I will show you that you can connect to your uh, slicer. So a slicer in Power BI is actually a visual as well. It's not like a feature of a visual, but rather it's sort of like a, a promoted element this time. It's a visual. So meaning you have to go to the visualizations tab and under the visualizations tab, you have to look for the visual that says slicer. So the icon has this filter icon. Okay, so yours may be in a different position, but chances are it's almost the same as what I have here by default. So I would click this and that will produce a new visual in my uh, Power BI uh, report. And then I would bring my field. So I would have to expand your data pane if it's not expanded yet. And then I am going to choose a field in my uh, data model. So let's say that I'm going to choose a subcategory. So I'm going to choose subcategory name and put it in my field. So now I have the different subcategories for my products. So just to give you an idea, the subcategory is a, an, a table in my uh, data model. It's not the topmost table wherein it's like the, this one here, the categories is like the highest categorization i only chose one from the subcategory and i'm going to filter the data using the fields there so because i already have this therefore i can create a slicer okay wherein the fields are from different uh files so let's check if the slicer is working so we check one of them okay maybe that one is not covered okay so let's choose something that is existing okay there you go i hope you noticed how the report is showing okay the different uh, filters that i have so i guess i have all the filters here so that's how you connect it so you would notice that by default a slicer can um, update okay the visuals if you want your slicer to update only a certain table, not all the charts or visuals in your uh, report page, then you have to control the interaction okay, of this visual, the slicer visual, towards the other visual. So to do that, let's say I'm going to restrict the visual from this uh, visual from limiting the entries from the first um, visual only. So I'm not going to modify the second visual. So to do that, you have to click on the slicer and then under the slicer, okay, you have to go to the top uh, pane and then you have to go to uh, format. And then that is where you will see the edit interactions button. So the edit interactions button will show the icons that are related to interactions so since uh, the visual that is currently selected is the slicer then it means that i'm modifying how these two visuals will react okay whenever i click something in my uh, slicer so now 
Um, I do not want the second visual to update. So I will click this button over here, the one that says none. So that means no interaction for the second visual if the slicer is clicked. On the other hand, the first visual, I will keep this filter button clicked so that that visual will update. So just to show you again, let me check one of the uh, visuals. See, you would notice that we're seeing some movement on the first visual, but not on the second one. And that is because we've already restricted okay, the action okay, only to the first visual. Now you may be uh, you may notice that this visual okay doesn't seem to be the slicer that you may be accustomed with in Excel. So to make it like similar to Excel, we can go to visualizations and you can go to format and then under format you will see there are some options to modify your visual. So since this uh, setting, okay the one that you like to show in your uh, report is something specific to the oops, something specific to the slicer visual then that means you have to go to the visual and then tab and then go to slicer settings and then under slicer settings you will see an option to change okay the default which is the vertical list style so you can choose drop down if you want it to be a little bit smaller because if you notice a while ago in the default one vertical list everything is listed okay so it may require some scrolling down okay in your data so i would choose drop down if i just want a drop down interaction okay or if you want something similar to how excel does it then you have to choose the tile uh, option so now we have the tile uh, option here, okay? And there are other things that you can modify in the slicer. So for example, if you want the headers or not, okay, you can turn it off or modify the text, the design, the color, the font color of the slicer header or just get away or with it entirely. So the other option is we have the value. So this would change the color of the values so the other options would be some properties here like the position if you're going to put in some background effects etc so these are all statics it's up to you if you want to use them okay or not all right so now you've seen how we can create the slicer and by the way if you are uh, conscious about how the slicer would look like so you would have to I mean, would look like in your report, you can resize okay, the canvas where, in, where the slicer is. And you would notice that the slicer would react based on the uh, area that you provide it to. So if I give it a smaller um, height, then I would have a horizontal looking uh, slicer. If I need something like just a one column slicer, then that means you just have to squeeze it a bit until it becomes a one column um, slicer however take note that this layout of your slicer like other visuals or charts will depend on how wide okay, your user's screen is so if your user has a wide screen which allows the slicer to expand a bit then the slicer will simply distribute the tiles okay, into several columns because it would look awkward if your wide screen will just have one slice okay, per row it's going to be quite a long slice so power bi will sort of like adjust that okay accordingly if you want to retain okay the settings that you have right now or the layout that you have right now for your slicer it means you have to visit something in the general so under the format your visual but instead of visual a while ago we'll go to general and you have to go to properties and go to advanced options under advanced options you will have to switch off the responsive option because this option is the one that allows power bi to react okay based on the 
um, screen of your user. So if you switch it on, so it will react. If not, then how you have it right now will be the format or the layout as how your users will also see it. So I'm switching it off because, you know, sometimes you want to retain how your report looks like the way you created it. And there you have it. We now have the slicer okay, in our visual. And I hope that helped you if you're, this is what you're looking for. If ever you have any questions about Power BI, feel free to follow the channel because I'm making uh, Power BI videos okay, for, for almost for the whole month of Feb and March. So please click uh, like and subscribe and maybe ring the notification bell. And if you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section and I'll try to answer as soon as I can. But for now, this is it. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video.